There are also videos on, on how to build dipoles. Uh, most of them made from coax and um, PVC pole. If you want to build one for sort of VATF, UATF range, then uh, the ones I build are completely waterproof, as we use in a waterproof junction box, and anodized aluminium 4mm rods. I'm in the UK, so I buy these from Screwfix Direct. I'm going to build a civil air dipole uh, based around 127.5 megahertz. Uh, so we need two of these rods because we won't quite make one out of one. If we're building one over, over sort of a 140 megahertz, you could get away with one of these. Now, to build this um, without the coax is under 14 pounds. If you actually bought two of these at eight pound 29 each, and, and two of these rods, you could actually make a civil air dipole and a military air dipole. Now, I'm going to do this as a solderless build. I do solder mine normally, but uh, a lot of people aren't, don't like soldering or don't hold a soldering iron, so I'm going to do this as a solderless build. So we've got some RG59 Coax and one of these twist-on connections, uh, just because of that. Uh, the coax is going to be connected directly to the dipole. You could put a short run on and put a connector on the end if you want it to make it so that it's easy to swap the coax at a later date. The waterproof box I use is a, it's called a tea box. It's from Hylec. Uh, I believe these are available worldwide. Very lightweight, as are these rods, so it makes a very lightweight build. And because of the nature of the box, we have two screw holes, so we can mount it that way, or it could actually be drilled through and using um, some little seals, we could actually mount it on, onto a, a little pole. So there's quite a few different ways that this could be mounted. It does come with a, numerous seals, and I'll show you how they use them shortly. We use some four millimeter female bullet connectors on this build. I say I, I would normally solder them, but as this is a solder's connection, and just using some common tools, you could use pliers, you could use side cuts, or, or wire strippers. You will need such as a Stanley knife. I use a little bit of foam, you could use uh, cardboard, something that will compress, just to make sure everything's nice and tight inside. Now, this one, this is the cheaper of the two variants that the T-Box make and within this one there is a connector block but we won't be using that so you can save that for another project late, later on and basically how, how this is going to be configured is we're going to use these on these rods one's going to go on each side and we're going to join the coax to these and onto there just crimping them on so now we need to calculate how long we want each leg for this dipole the site that I use is csgnetwork.com. I will put a link to this in the description for their amateur dipole antenna calculator. I do like this because it just shows the results in both metric and imperial. Now, as I'm making a dipole for civilian air in the UK, I'm cutting it for around 127.5 megahertz, which I'm going to enter that in here. And then I want to calculate just one side because we are cutting each side independently. We'll hit calculate. So that's given me readings uh, on the for metric at 0.559 meters. So that'll be 55.9 centimeters. Uh, so that is what I'm going to be using. And we'll be cutting each of the rods to that length. Now we know what length that we want to cut the aluminium rod to. If we're using the bullet connectors, we have to be aware that that will form part of the length of the antenna. So we, that will be a tight fit. So that's fully on at that. I'm not going to crimp it just yet. And I know that it comes just to the edge of this connector here. If we weren't using these connectors, we would cut the length exactly 55.9 centimeters for, for the rod. But as I'm using bullet connectors, we want that to be part of it. So 55.9 would be there. So we're just going to take our cutters 
we can chop that off. And you can see it cuts quite easily. So we've got one now, we can see that this one will be too short, but it would be ideal to be able to cut again for use on a military and military air uh, dipole. We're now going to prepare the cax. We want to cut it back about two inches. Now, what we do want to do is use one of these weather seals, push that down the coax first. We want to cut back approximately about two inches. Peel that off. We want to use the braid because that will go to one side of the dipole. And then we want to cut off, leaving a bit of the center insulation intact. Pull that off, and we're going to want to trim that to about that, about that sort of length. What we want to do now is put one of these on there to keep those separated. We want to put one of these on here and then leaving a small gap between the insulation that so we can bend this over in a second, put that on there and crimp it. So that, that will go out to one side and we'll do the same on this side, we'll put another, another connection on. So these are four millimeter bullet connect, connectors. So th that's that prepared. It might have helped if I put one of the connections on here. So we'll just rectify that. So they're going to push down a little bit. So then we'll put these one in each side. If I didn't drop one. And again, you, you would crimp those. They are a good tight fit on there anyway. So give those a crimp. And then we want two of these to slide on each end. So that is basically the antenna put together and we're going to put it into the case. So we're going to have that one there, that one on there, making sure that these are sitting in these little pieces at the end. That one in there. Now I have noticed when I'm doing these that they're not quite as tight with these rubber seals so we get a little bit of flex on these. So all I do is use a little bit of foam core. And so you can, anything that's compressible would work. I just put that in just so it keeps everything really nice and tight. Make sure these are all pushed in. We'll then put these, we'll go over the top, make sure they lock. Slide those down to make sure that everything is. nice and tight and so this is a very lightweight antenna 
I'm doing it this way, it is waterproof so you can put it up I know you've not, not got to worry too much about external connections obviously you could have run the coax outside the box and put a connection on here so you could change the coax to later date There we, there we have it, one civil air cut for 127.5, uh, I will test it in a moment. So now we have the dipole built, uh, I've put it outside in clear air space. This is purely for me now um, to actually test where, where the antenna is resonant and how good my cutting was. Now uh, following the dimensions that I posted, we have actually got it at... 124 megahertz so i'm quite happy with that um not quite 127 but more than near enough uh we've got quite a good wide band from sort of what 104 up to 136 within this sort of range here which is which uh, will work very well for civil air band uh, we always have numerous dips as we go across so uh this will that this will actually work quite well right up into military air bands so it'll actually make a quite a good dual band antenna and even up into the business bands as well so very happy with that so that's how i build a dipole that's um fully waterproof very light easy to mount and uh, cheap to make. Uh, you can sort of use any coax that, that you would like, uh, terminate any way you like, solder it, um, or do as I've done on this build to make it a solderless build uh, to actually just crimp connections on. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.